So today we're getting our, our biggest snowstorm this year so far, and I thought I'd go over our solar power battery backup systems. We've got like three of them installed right now and how we can somewhat cascade those and tie those somewhat together to be able to last a longer period of time because I don't think we're gonna be charging our batteries back up off of solar because our panels are up on the roof, they're gonna be covered in snow and it's gonna be cloudy. It's just not gonna be good solar producing weather. But yet I think we're set up where we can at least go a couple days, I hope, if the power goes out. So let's go, I'll show you how this all goes together. So the grid power from the electric company comes to this breaker panel here in the workshop. And this is mostly power distribution, mostly just big loads. So we have 100 amps from here that goes over to the solar power room and in turn that powers our house. And then we have another 100 amps that leaves here and goes to the 12K PV, which we can use to power this workshop. And then it is also welding receptacles. It's also our, our big uh, five horsepower air compressor. It's, ju it's just the big loads that go through here. And most of this panel is actually empty now. It's just about, I think like six loads in here. That's all we have. So we're here in our solar power room. So the 100 amps from the grid panel, it comes into this breaker right here. And then this feeds our EP cube system. And if you guys are EG4, um, if you guys have been paying attention to it, they've got the new grid boss system, which creates a micro grid. It's like a service entrance box where you can tie all your inverters together. That is the same thing as this smart gateway. They're configured slightly differently. This one can take a total of six inverters into it. And then it has two smart loads as well. But this smart gateway and the grid boss are doing the, essentially the exact same thing. So the system right here that we have set up, it has 7,600 watts of solar and then it has 20 kilowatts of battery and it powers this breaker panel. And this breaker panel can be fed three different ways. So you can, we got a transfer switch here for a bypass so we can directly put this to the grid and bypass this system. With it down, it's on backup power, it's on the EP cube and then we also have a breaker interlock in here that is tied to a generator inlet outside. So if everything fails, I can still hook up a generator and I can power up this panel. And this panel is the one that goes and powers our house. So big picture, grid power comes into here. When we have a power outage, this disconnects and then everything from this panel forward is powered by battery backup. So right here on the side of the workshop, this is a 50 amp inlet for the generator for that breaker panel we were just looking at. So I can easily set up a generator out here on this covered porch and back feed and power the house and keep everything running if I need to. So we're down here in the basement of our house now and this breaker panel right here, this is powered by the EP cube. It has all of our large loads in it. So it has our, like our air conditioner, our oven, our dryer is in here and then some of the non-essential loads. And then over here, we've got the 6000 XP and it is powering this breaker panel. This has all of our critical loads. It has our fridge, freezer, it has our furnace, uh, the fireplace blower, uh, all the lights in the house. It's all powered by the 6000 XP and then it has a 14.3 kilowatt hour battery to power it. So if we do end up losing grid power during the snowstorm, we would minimize the use of our larger loads. We wouldn't cook in the oven. We wouldn't use the dryer. We would try to get the EPQ batteries to last as long as possible. And all of our critical loads will be ran by the 6000 XP and it will run all of these loads for probably the size of the battery is right now, probably somewhere around 18 hours. And then once the battery is drained, it will switch to what it thinks is grid power, but is actually the EP cube system. So then we would start draining its batteries to power our essential loads. And then hopefully we would be sometime at least over a 24 hour period that we could last just on those batteries. So if we go without power longer than a day and we end up draining our batteries, we've got several different choices after that. So one, we could just hook a generator up to this 50 amp inlet and I can back feed the house and I can force charge the batteries on the 6000 XP and I can get them charged back up uh, where they'll at least uh, last a day or most of a day and turn the generator back off and then just run the critical loads panel. 
So in here in the shop, I've got some work going on. So it's very messy, but I've got the 12K PV here. And then I've got all my batteries hooked up to it. So I've got two wall mount batteries hooked to it. I've got three server rack batteries hooked to this. And this is somewhere around, I think, 43 kilowatt hours worth of batteries. And this is an 8,000 watt uh, inverter. So it's actually a little bit more powerful than the EP Cube. And what I could do with this is I could take this 50 amp outlet that is right here and I can plug in an extension cord over to that generator inlet and then I could power my entire house off of this system and these batteries and then that'll get me like another 24 hours of runtime. So like I said, this system doesn't look very good right now. I, was, I set it up to charge this extra wall mount battery and the extra server rack battery that I bought and I've just kind of left it that way in case I need to use it. So my next option is to recharge these batteries right here using the EG4 charge verter, and then I can just use an extension cord to run this out to the generator. But if you use the generator specifically to just charge the batteries, you're gonna run the generator less. You're probably only gonna run it for a few hours at a time. Your fuel supply will last longer. So then in turn, you can go longer during a power outage. So I talked about recharging the batteries on both of the EG4 inverters, but I didn't talk about it on the EP Cube because this is really designed to have a standby generator. It will request a generator to turn on at like 20%. And if it doesn't come on by the time the battery is down to 15%, this goes into dark mode and like kind of shuts down waiting for the sun to come out. And you have like a really small window to start a generator manually to try to fake this out. And then when you do, at least when I've tried it in the past, it just tries to run the loads off the generator. It doesn't try to recharge the battery. There wasn't a way to like force charge the batteries off of the generator connection. At least that's the way it was like a year ago. So I disconnected the generator hookup and I interlocked it to this panel instead. And the EPQ may have changed their software since then, but that's just the way I have it set up right now. Hopefully you guys can somewhat understand the architecture of our system here. It is very complicated. It's not the way you guys would set this up at a normal home, but making solar power videos, it is a lot easier to have all these separate systems powering different parts of buildings to be able to make different videos and show this, the system separately. But on my system, half the house is powered by the EP cube. The other half is powered by the 6,000 XP. If the battery goes low on the 6000 XP, the EP cube can power the entire thing. And with my generator connection out here, I can power the house also with the generator or with the 12K PV. And I've got the option to charge with the charge verter. So I've got several options out there in case of a power outage. And that's the way I, I like it personally. I, I, it is complicated, but I like to have built-in redundancies, built-in options, about everything out here I can power two to three different ways. I like those options. So if I was to build this system over again for someone like you, I, it would all be in this one room and I would have a, a, a breaker panel in here that would just be for the backed up loads off the system and I would still have a transfer switch so that I can bypass all of the solar power equipment and be able to work on it de-energized um, and just power everything off the grid if, if I wanted to. And then for this system here, I, you could probably replace the smart gateway with a grid boss system and then put an 18 KPV or a flex boss 21 in here and be able to, to power your system with about 12,000 watts of inverter power. And then I would leave room for expansion. So there's still room on this wall where I could add another inverter and another battery and then maybe put more batteries up over here. So I would definitely leave room to build on that system. And if you have the grid boss system, it's made, I think, to take three inverters into it. So there's expansion room to add, you know, two additional inverters later. So that's probably the way I would go and it would all be in one system in one location and it would be a lot simpler. So that was a quick overview of my system. We'll just have to wait and see how this storm turns out if we have to end up using it or not. Right now I've got everything in backup mode. All the batteries are like 100%. We're solely running off the grid and we're basically just sitting here waiting to see if the power goes out. And hopefully it won't. But I think that's it for this video guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.